Good morning, everyone. This is Maddie from Two NPs in a Pod. We're doing the takeover today, and I just wanted to let you know we're going to first off post a uh, poll question for you guys so you can post any questions that you have about NP-related things, all the things. Um, you can ask about school, applying for jobs, transition from nursing to nurse practitioner, uh, duties. We're going to be covering a lot of that anyways but if you have specific questions please feel free to include those we want to make sure we get all your questions answered if there's a lot of things that people are asking the same question we can address that as a whole and we also want to address your individual questions as well If I had to sum up my journey with nursing, I would call it like an arranged marriage that has slowly grown on me over time. I have learned to love. Nursing was not love at first sight for me. I was originally a molecular biology major, realized I did not want to spend the rest of my life with PCR plates in a lab. So some good friends of mine who were nursing students at the university convinced me to come over to the dark side. It is nursing school was definitely a dark side. It's very difficult. Um, I didn't love it at first. Um, so if you're feeling that way, you're not alone. The beauty of nursing though is that there are so many specialties, so you are never locked into a certain track. If you don't like any area you're in, try something different. Um, for me, my first job was in vascular thoracic surgery, and it was not something I loved, so I changed to inpatient medical oncology and had a completely different experience. Um, so I would encourage you, if you um, feel like you need to make that change, do it. It will just, it'll save your sanity and it'll um, give you just a more fulfillment of your career and longevity of your career as well. I also wanted to share with you all my experience transitioning from an RN to an NP. So I did work as a registered nurse for four years prior to practicing as a nurse practitioner. And I feel like those four years of a clinical experience as an RN helped to make me a better NP. Um, everyone's journey is different to becoming a nurse practitioner. However, for me personally, I think having um, those numerous years of work as an RN made me a more successful NP. Um, experience communicating with patients, especially delivering bad news. That's something that takes a lot of practice and unfortunately doesn't get much easier over time, um, as well as uh, communicating with other um, coworkers. So whether that be uh, nursing assistants or providers, I feel that um, it made me a better NP already having that experience communicating with um, others in the healthcare system. Um, having experience in pharmacology, medication administration, patient care plans, um, as well as just a simple fact of knowing how to chart an assessment in a healthcare system or place orders. Um, that I feel like all that was really good for me to have first before I then became a provider. Um, for my NP schooling, I went to The Ohio State University and I did their online full-time FNP program, which I really, really liked. Um, all the instructors are very nice and I felt like my experience was wonderful. I did choose to go to school full time and work full time at the same time. And I would not necessarily recommend that. <laughs> um, if you can make one of those part time, I feel like that would be ideal. Um, it was just very stressful, not a lot of sleep. Uh, I don't think my house was ever clean, laundry was always on backflow for forever. Um, so I made it through those two years. It was very difficult, but if you do have the chance to um, kind of restrict your hours on either school or work while you're in school, uh, then please do so. I think that would be very helpful. I really hope you guys don't mind my makeupless face this morning and me just being in comfy clothes at home because it's um, a day off for me and I'm relaxing while doing this. So hopefully y'all aren't judging me for that. Um, but um, I also want to talk a little bit about 
um, my background as an RN and how I kind of transitioned into the nurse practitioner role and how my um, RN job kind of helped me in my current job. So I got my RN and my bachelor's degree at Otterbein with Rose. That's where we met. We were in the same nursing program, same sorority, all that jazz. And the rest is history. Um, after I was finished with my RN degree, I um, was accepted into the Ohio Health um, Critical Care Fellowship. So that's just like a uh, fast-paced program to get new grads directly into the critical care setting. Um, I know a lot of you don't live in Ohio, but I know there are a lot of other programs like that. Um, for those of you that are nurses or in nursing school um, that are interested in critical care, um, I have a cousin that's doing the same thing out of state. So um, just a kind of side note there. I did the critical care fellowship, I think it was about four months, and then we all got placed in different ICUs without that, um, throughout that healthcare system. And I was placed um, at a smaller hospital within Ohio Health. Um, and the unique thing about the unit that I worked on is that um, it was a critical care unit, but because the hospital, um, when I started, was only 60 inpatient beds, the um, unit that I was on was 20 beds. So really, we'd never, I mean, we don't even get close to a full unit of ICU patients. Some days we would have none. A lot of times we'd have one to two, one to three. Um, at most, I think we had when I was there was maybe six or seven at a time. So um, from that aspect, I also got to take care of overflow medical and surgical patients. And we also took the step down patients or the intermediate care patients on our unit as well. Um, so I did a little bit of everything, which at first I was not a fan of because I really had my heart set on critical care um, as I learned a lot of things um, that I wouldn't have had I not taken care of the intermediate and the medical patients. And it was also nice to some days have patients that could walk and talk um, and communicate with you. So um, I think that having all of those experiences kind of wrapped up into one um, was really beneficial for me because I saw a little bit of everything and it made me more marketable as a nurse. So after a few years um, as a bedside nurse, I knew I wanted to continue my education um, and be a nurse practitioner. So um, I started Otterbein University's um, part-time program. They only have a part-time program um, in 2016, and I just graduated in spring of 2019. So it was a three-year program part-time, which actually worked really well for me. Um, I was still able to work um, full-time up until my last year of school when I was doing clinicals. Um, I did cut back to part-time, so two 12-hour shifts a week, um, which worked out really well. It still gave me study time, um, gave me a day or two a week to do clinicals, and it worked out really well for me. I know some people work uh, full-time and go to school. I think it just depends on who you are as a person, um, how soon you want to get done with school, what else you have going on in your life, that sort of thing. Um, if you have more questions about recommendations for that, um, we can definitely help you answer those. Um, so I was really lucky um, that I did not have a lot of trouble finding a nurse practitioner job. Um, everything kind of just worked out the way it was supposed to. I did my last semester um, of clinicals in a primary care office within Ohio Health. And um, I was with a nurse practitioner that I knew through my husband who used to work with her. Um, and I just really loved the office. I loved the people that worked there. I loved the, um, the patients there. And they actually opened up a part-time nurse practitioner position. Um, while I was still in clinical there, um, why not apply for it? And it actually ended up being perfect because um, I 
have some chronic health issues and um, my body was physically like not in a good place at that time. So my husband and I decided it would be best for me to just work part time for now anyways. Um, and the great thing about the job is I um, don't come in until 3 p.m. Um, and it's Monday through Thursday. So I have three day weekends um, every week. I know I'm super blessed in that. Um, I come in at three. I um, see established patients for a few hours. And then I also do walk in hours, basically like an urgent care um, in the evenings. So um, this was a new job uh, at this practice. They did not have walk-in hours until I started this um, the end of the summer when I was finished with orientation. So um, taking on um, a brand new role as a brand new nurse practitioner was um, and still is a little bit challenging though. Um, one of the biggest challenges is that um, after like 5 or 6 p.m., the other providers that I work with um, go home and it's just me and um, an MA and um, we have an office staff member too so it's just the three of us in the evenings um, so we all kind of had this learning process together of what this um, walk-in hour process was going to look like and thankfully I feel like everybody has been really great with the transition there have been a lot of questions a lot of things we've had to adjust um, over the months but everything's working out really well and the patients are loving the walk-in hours so um, don't be intimidated if you are applying for jobs where you're going to be the first nurse practitioner or you're starting kind of a new process a new role um, it is doable um, however I would definitely um, ask the right questions, make sure they have um, a process in place, make sure they have resources in place um, so that you don't feel alone because um, you're going to feel a little bit alone already as a new nurse practitioner. Um, thankfully, all the other providers I work with are a text or a call away and they all um, answer me really promptly and they've been so, so helpful. I am just incredibly blessed to work with the people that I work with um, and we can kind of go more into that as far as what questions you should um, make sure to ask when you're interviewing or when you're applying for jobs things to look for So just to give you all a little insight on what my day-to-day -day looks like for my NP role. Um, I work in a family practice in Columbus, Ohio, and I work the, um, like the urgent care visit side of the practice, so I only see the acutes. Um, I do work three 12s every week, which is really great. Um, I have that schedule as an RN, and I love it. Um, my first NP job, I was Monday through Friday, and I about went crazy. I had no idea when I was supposed to do laundry, grocery shopping, do my own doctor's appointments, so I'm definitely in my zone back in the 312s. I also do work every third weekend, um, but the weekends are not full 12 hour shifts, so you're still able to do some sort of you know social activities during the weekends you work. Um, and I really, really love my role. Um, so again, I mentioned I do acute visits. I see complaints primarily like URIs, UTIs, rashes, musculoskeletal injuries, headaches, abdominal pain, um, women's health complaints all over the board. Um, so uh, we sometimes do serve as like a triage for the emergency room too if we need to send a patient for further care. Um, but what I do is I get to my office around 7 a.m. and um, I see patients um, for six hours first and then I have like an hour lunch break um, and then I see patients again up until around 6.30 and my shift ends at 7 p.m. I don't take call, which is great, um, and I am in charge of my own in basket, so we are encouraged to check that even on our off days since we're off four days a week. We don't want to leave patients hanging, um, so I am in charge of that, but um, besides that, it's really an awesome role. Um, I definitely see longevity in my career um, at the family practice I'm in. Um, yeah, and let me know if you have any questions about NP roles that you've been, oper um, NP roles that you've been exploring. I'm going to go ahead and start out by talking about some tips um, to survive nurse practitioner school. As those of you who have completed 
NP school or who are currently in it, you understand uh, the stress and work that comes with school, um, but you can do it. It is definitely doable. Um, there are just some things that you should know going into it, or if you're just starting out, some things that might help you out. Uh, first things first, my first suggestion is to find some buddies in your program that um, are of the same mindset, shall I say, as you as far as studying goals. Um, we all know there are a couple of people in every nurse practitioner class that are like finishing their assignments like three months in advance. And if that's not you, um, don't use them as your buddy because it's just going to make you feel bad about going at your own pace. So find someone who um, you can relate to, who goes at your pace, um, that you feel like you can lean on, ask questions to, that won't be judgmental, um, things like that. I personally had um, two really close friends that I found in my program and a couple others when we got into kind of a bigger group that we all kind of collaborated with. And I can just say this was such a huge help. Um, you, one, don't feel so alone. And two, you just need somebody to ask questions to, to study with, and that sort of thing. One of the other really good things about the buddy system for grad school is that you can um, rely on each other's strengths. Um, I found that in my group um, that I studied with a lot um, in school, um, um, you really can rely on others to help you through the topics that you struggle with. And then you can do the same for them as well. We would even um, split up the readings if there was a lot of uh, book reading for one week. I felt like some weeks, I swear, we had like 20 chapters to read and they were all completely different different. So um, the five of us would kind of split those up, um, write notes on those sections, and then we were able to um, give those out to each other and kind of point things out that we thought, hey, this would be um, a really good test question, something I could see them putting on the test. Um, this is something that I feel like is a core concept to this disease or this process that you should understand. Um, and that saved time and um, a little effort, um, brain power, uh, because we all know that can be in short supply some days in school. So just some things to keep in mind about the buddy system. Um, if you guys have any questions about that or um, want some more suggestions. So I just wanna clarify, use the buddy system to um, add on to that, not to replace doing your own work. Um, it just helps to get another person's perspective and another person's thoughts on what might be important um, and what, again, are the core concepts and things to take away from each section. Um, but definitely make sure you're still doing your own work and putting in the time that you need and also using the resources themselves. So that is kind of the second tip that I'll transition to is figure out what works for you. What works for you as far as studying and how to learn things is not going to be the same as everyone in your class or even maybe your buddy. Um, but that's really important to find that out early in your program so you know what exactly works for you, um, what you have success with and that sort of thing. All right, another tip for surviving grad school is um, to not procrastinate. Um, one of the nice things about school is that you get a syllabus at the beginning of the semester. You know exactly um, we're all adults. We all, most of us have jobs. Um, some of us have kids and other commitments, so life can be busy. Um, so don't procrastinate um, and do your assignments the day before or even two days before. Um, I always gave myself um, a couple extra days just to make sure if there were even like fudges I needed to add to a paper or an assignment or something like that. Um, something that will really help you with that if um, you're a control freak or if you're a type A, like a lot of us are in the healthcare system, um, if you're not already doing it, is to get a planner or some sort of calendar where you can put important due dates in. Um, 
and with all of your other life events. It's also nice to see as far as planning goes, um, when you have your work schedule and everything else laid out in front of you, you can see what days you have free to study um, because you definitely need to set aside time just for studying, not just assignments and projects, but time to review the topics that you were supposed to be learning that week, um, maybe anything that you need to go back and review that you still don't feel like you understand from prior weeks. Also, in your planner or whatever you're using, make sure you're definitely setting aside time for self-care, whether that's just a day that you don't do any schoolwork at all, um, spending time with friends, with family, um, spa day, whatever it is that you love or is your thing, um, make some time for that. You definitely need time to unwind um, and just relax and have a break from the So some tips for job hunting when you finally make it through MP school. First of all, congratulations. That's definitely no easy feat, so you should feel very proud of yourself. Depending on where you live or where you're planning on practicing, the market will change with saturation and opportunities. Um, Maddie and I both practice in the Columbus, Ohio area, which is extremely saturated with NPs at the moment. There are not a lot of opportunities and the competition is pretty steep. So what I would do is start researching job opportunities before you graduate um, and feel free to apply and interview with these opportunities um, before you graduate or sit for your certification exam. Uh, you'll just tell your employer this is what I anticipate to happen um, and it just kind of gets you ahead of the game and you already go into graduation knowing what opportunities are available. I would always, always write a cover letter with your resume. It definitely makes a difference, especially if there's a lot of MPs applying for this job, to show that you put forth this extra effort um, and just, you know, makes the employer know that you're serious about this opportunity and gives them a little bit more insight on your personality and your goals. Personally, I have used Indeed.com a lot for my job searching. Um, there are there are a plethora of job search engines out there, um, and not all NP jobs are on every single platform. So it does, you know, serve you well to take a peek around different ones, you know, such as like Glassdoor um, or like Monster. There might be other opportunities that you don't find on Indeed. Also check out your local health systems um, job posting. So go directly to the hospital site. Um, it does help to have some contacts. So always reach out to your old preceptors and see if they happen to know of anything too. Um, but overall, best of luck with job hunting. It can be stressful and it can take a few months. Don't lose hope. You'll find something that's right for you. I would just recommend that you accept a job opportunity you feel will be. To begin, I am a child.